Welcome back to Red Hawk Media, and today we are making enemies. Let's get started. In the description below, there's a link for the sprites that I used here for these enemies. We're going to make our first enemy animation. I'm selecting these two sprites, which is the idle, and I'm going to drag them into the hierarchy. That prompts us to make a new animation. We're going to go ahead and give this a new name, idle enemy 5, because this is the fifth enemy that I've made. Upon creating that game object, we're going to rename it, and I'd just call it enemy. And it's got a controller on it, and it's got that first animation. And now we want to take that and move it into a location where we can work on it. Once you get your enemy moved into a location where you can work on it, we're going to go ahead and add some components to it. The first of which is a box collider 2D. The second is a rigid body 2D. And then we're going to go in and we're going to edit the box collider. We want to make sure that this is really accurate because our player will be interacting with that box collider to destroy the enemy. Now I'm going to navigate to my script folder, where I have two scripts, both included in the description below, the extension method script and the enemy script. We're going to take the enemy script and we're going to drag that onto our enemy game object. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab that, drag it on over there. And now you'll see that we've got a speed, my width, my height. And we're going to start working with that. Now, if you don't adjust anything out of the gates, you can see what's happening with the enemy. He's just flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the game here so that I can figure out a couple of the settings. First, we have this ray cast that is casting a line, and we want that line to be in front and down of our enemy. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my width first. I want to get that line moving over to the side, and the height, I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to unpause it, and then I'm going to pause it again, and you can see that it's moved a little bit. Now, we still need to move it more to the outside of our character, preferably outside of our enemy collider. So I'm going to adjust the width a little bit more, about 2.25, and let's try negative 0.75. Unpause it, and then we're going to pause it again, and you can see that line's move, but it's still not quite touching the collider below the enemy, and that's still going to cause it to flip back and forth. So we'll try negative one. Now, I'm still not getting the movement yet because I have to adjust the enemy mask. My platforms are on the layer platform, and I want to mask out the enemy layer as well. So I selected enemy and platform. Now I'm going to go about changing my enemy to the enemy layer. If you haven't got that, go ahead and add the layer. You can add it onto any one of these. Type in enemy, and then make sure you switch it on over to enemy. Now you can see our enemy is actually tracking back and forth here. When it collides with the wall, it flips, and when it runs out of collider, it flips. So he's going back and forth nice and easy. Before I hop out of play mode, I want to take a good look at my settings. Because now that I'm out of play mode, I'm going to have to re-add those in. So 2.25, and again, these numbers will probably vary for you. A negative 1 for my height. And you'll have to play around with these to see what works. I make sure that the enemy mask is all set again to platform and enemy. And then I'm going to also make sure that my enemy is actually on the enemy layer. Excellent. So everything seems to be in place. Let's go ahead and test that out. The enemy is moving back and forth here, and I can destroy him. So far, so good. Excellent. Now, we did make some other modifications to scripts, and I included the player health script in the description below because that's one of them that we adjusted. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, let's take a look at that, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and select my character, and on my character, I've got my player health script. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek at that. Here's the code I actually added so that we can have a collision on top of our character and so that it kills the character and actually takes some of your life away. This is also a public float called Bounce. And what that does is it adds an upward vector 2 force to your character once he makes collision with the top of the enemy. 
Now, if you wanna change that out, um, this is something that you could modify. I'm gonna set it to zero just to show you what it looks like with no bounce. We're gonna hop in, test it out here. When I jump up here, I drop right through the enemy. There's no upward force added after I make contact. So now I'm gonna switch it back here, um, set it to 1500, hop back in, and you'll see a difference right away. if I can make the jump here. And voila. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us here. Now remember that all of the referenced resources for this tutorial are in the description below. You can grab the player health script, you can grab the enemy script, and then the extension method script that works in the background. Thanks for joining us for another Red Hawk Media episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye.